I'm Maureen Rogers from Laurel Mill Playhouse, and welcome to Curtain Call. And I have some wonderful guests today. I have the director and the costumer from Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. So why don't you introduce yourselves and tell us a little about, a bit about your role in this okay. production. Uh, my name is Michael Hartsfield, and I am the director of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I'm Marge McGugan and I costumed it. Um, I'm also understudying for one of the brothers for one weekend. So I'm, I'll be up there dancing and singing That's too. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be great. So we, um, we came to this, how to this uh, show. A very special person at yes, Laurel Mill Playhouse. That's true. Our musical director, <laughs> Mimi McGinnis, this is her favorite show. And so um, we've worked together for a few years, and uh, of course I love the show too. So um, when she uh, suggested it and, and really wanted to do it, I was more than happy, and thankfully you were more than happy to do it as yeah, well. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's a great show. So, it is a great uh, yeah. show, lots of great music. Yeah. The last time I saw it was when Laurel Community mm -hmm. Theater was in existence, and right. they did a great job then. Um, it has, a, it's mostly music, right? There's no... it, it's almost entirely music. Uh -huh. I mean, there may be, a handful of dialogue, I mean, but that's at it's most. I mean, it is yeah. front to back, uh, all singing and dancing. So it is a pure musical for sure. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It, it's great. Right. I, lo I love to watch the dancing yeah. and it's and they're really doing a great mm -hmm. job. And they are. we've got a live band. Which we do, is... we do have a live band. It's very exciting. You know, we do a lot in a very small space, but uh, like the name implies, it's it's full of color, it's full of life, all different types of music from Calypso to jazz, a little bit of rock. I mean, there's all sorts of type, yeah. you know, so. So how many people in this cast? I should know the exact number, but we are right, <laughs> even, even <laughs> about 20. Oh, 20. About 20. It seems we, like 30 on the it stage. It does <laughs> seem like that much, right? But, you know, there are uh, 11 brothers, um, and then, you know, we've got wives and ensemble and, and you know, Pharaoh and Potiphar. So we're right about 20 people total, right? So, mm -hmm. so what's been your favorite part about directing this show? Oh, the favorite part. Well, um, seeing it all come together is always my favorite part. You know, when you put a new group of people together, and, and I've done the show before. I've directed the show before at a high school. And oh, so, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I did it a few yeah. years ago at, high, at a high school, and it, it's always interesting to see the differences in the show. And so, uh, you know, it, it, it's you always worry about it, you know, up until a certain point, and then you realize it's starting to come together. And it, it, it's always a, a real pleasure to see that sort of gel happening and it's really started mm -hmm. happening so it, it's a miracle it is theater. a miracle it, it always <laughs> seems to happen when you least expect it so there's a wide range of ages in this cast there right are. yeah we have uh from i think our youngest cast member just turned 10 yesterday is that mimi's that's mimi's yeah. daughter uh -huh. delaney right uh she just turned 10 sunday i think okay. so um uh up to I don't know who the oldest person is, but yeah. we have uh, all older. the way older, <laughs> uh, older, we'll say. Uh, so it, it, it does, it ranges, which is actually pretty appropriate for the show, I yeah. think. You yeah, know, absolutely. You know, um, because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, it appeals to all ages. It's definitely a yeah. family show, for sure. So. The, um, so how long does the show last, and is there an intermission? There is an intermission. It's a very fast show, though. So. Even including the intermission, we should it, it, only about an hour and a half. Okay. Great. Um, you know, depending on the amount of applause and all of that stuff, of course. And we hope there'll be lots. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it, it actually is a, a very fast moving show, uh -huh. uh, especially since, you know, the, the music, uh, like we said, it's all music. So th that timing of songs doesn't change, <laughs> right? You know, with dialogue, it can slow down right. and may speed up. Oh, but sure, with yeah. songs, you're pretty much set with the yeah. tempo. So once yeah. you start, <laughs> you're going through it. So uh, it's about an hour and a half. So. Well, I'm grateful to Mimi for bringing mm -hmm. this up yes. to do it. And it was funny as I'm listening to the songs, I'm going, oh, yes, I, I remember mm -hmm. that now. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's got a wonderful rhythm to it. It does. And, and even if you're not familiar with the entire show, I think most people are familiar with the songs. Even right. if they don't know it's from the show, right. <laughs> they right. probably will, will recognize a lot right. of the songs. And they're very catchy tunes. They are. You can, they are. You can um, right. like them immediately, I That's think. That's true. Now we had costumes, and mm -hmm. thanks to Marge, uh, <laughs> who came forth. And Marge has been pretty much our resident costumer here for a while, so yeah. we have mm -hmm. to crown you fairly soon. You know? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
We had help from local Laurel here. We had yes. uh, Marilyn Johnson and her uh, costume and design studio, but yes. you still had a lot to do. <laughs> yes, uh, there were still some holes that needed to be <laughs> plugged in, in a manner of speaking. Um, Marilyn's costumes were, you know, they're great and they fit thinner people but we had some very tall people in here too right and uh, we needed and some people switched out so uh, I've been uh, busy sewing and filling in the blanks and in, in a manner of speaking I know you've been very very busy and we appreciate that yes. now you've done um, tell us some of the uh, shows that you have costumed recently oh uh, recently I did uh, moon over Buffalo and you can't take it with you uh, arsenic and old lace. So I've done several. Yeah, over I've done a lot of mill. period costumes. Mm -hmm. Period costumes, yes, and this is no different. <laughs> I mean, we've got biblical <coughs> shepherds and biblical Egyptians and a lot of visual plot twists. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they look great. And behind the both of you, we have the amazing Technicolor Dream yes. Coat. This came from uh, Marilyn Johnson's studio. Um, and I believe she made it. I, I believe it was made by her. So can you tell what some of this means here on the coat? Well, the whole premise is that Jacob gives his favorite son uh, a fancy coat to make him stand out from the rest of his brothers. And all the colors, it, he just hit all the colors of the rainbow, as many as you could, and varying hues inside the rainbow, too. And uh, you see that with the sun, you know, that's just his shining light there. And uh, it, it's meant to be, um, I guess you could say, it's meant to really make him stand out in the world, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's not something to let him blend in with the rest of society mm -hmm. right. at that time. Right. So, Michael, why do you think people should come to see this show? Well, I mean, I think even though it's set, like Marge was saying, in, in you know, Old Testament big biblical times, it's a fun show. And there are some serious things happening. I mm -hmm. mean, this coat kind of sets off a series of <laughs> events among the brothers that aren't exactly nice. However, it's told in a very lighthearted way. Uh, and it is, I think, for family. I mean, mm -hmm. even though there are some serious sort of family things that are happening, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's certainly not... Um, I don't know, gory or, or you know, you yeah. know, it's not, there's nothing that the kids are going to, you right. know, uh, take away and be scared or anything. Right. It's very lighthearted, but there are sort of those underlying themes about forgiveness mm -hmm. and family and, and sibling rivalry, you know, sibling rivalry oh, yeah. and <laughs> jealousy and <laughs> all, all of those things that, um, you know, I think. Does it, it teach some things? It certainly teaches yeah. some things, mm -hmm. you know, good and bad. I yeah. mean, I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, certainly, you know, even the hero, so to speak, is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And none of us are so that's yeah, good that's right <laughs> so what would you like to direct musical wise or play wise in the future you mean yes yeah. <laughs> oh. if this one doesn't have killed you right you know? no no <laughs> i don't you know laurel's always been so kind to me i've done so much and i you know so i don't have anything on my wish list right yet i'm sure i will <laughs> once i I'm decompress <laughs> Because, of course, we're going right into Aladdin Jr. anyway. Yes, so that's yes. <laughs> Aladdin Jr. is yeah. our kids' yeah. event. Yes. And I'm glad you brought that mm -hmm. up. Um, it's Aladdin Jr. plus a cabaret. Right. And it's a learning experience for children. It starts June the 3rd. June 3rd. And you can go to our website and look that up and uh, learn how to sign up. And um, you can also sign up at different times with me. Or mm -hmm. Michael has that's a time, right. too, where he signs up. But we have, we have great... Um, great people mm -hmm. that are helping us with that. Mm -hmm. So right. it is wonderful. Do you have anything on your bucket list you want to? Theatrically? <laughs> yeah, yeah, theatrically <laughs> and costume-wise. Oh, well, costume-wise, I hadn't really thought of anything that's on a bucket list. Mm -hmm. I, my bucket is still very open, mm -hmm. so yeah. Oh, good. Um, um, <laughs> thinking about ways keep I filling. can fill it. Keep right. filling. We'll keep filling that but for you. But <laughs> acting wise, you know, I would really like to play Mrs. Peru in um, Music Man. Oh, yeah. I love that show. Yeah. That's a great show. 
The music man. <laughs> Don't you like it too, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Mike likes the like 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 edgier <laughs> things, you know. But this was not. This is not edgy. It's not too edgy. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. So um, it's going to be a great time, and I hope that you all join us. Um, it's and then and um, you can see that it's for everybody, and it's a nice intimate theater. If you haven't been there, it only seats fifty nine. So you need to get your tickets uh, very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Next up, we're going to interview two actors uh, from the show. So stay tuned. I know you're going to enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Laurel has undergone many changes and seen much growth throughout its history, but the one thing that remains constant is the progressive spirit that keeps the city moving forward. Many of the projects currently underway in Laurel align themselves with Maryland's vision of smart and green growth. Transit-oriented development, or TODs, have become a primary focus within the city, bringing new and exciting opportunities. Town Center at Laurel offers mixed-use, high-density developments that include theaters, restaurants, shops, and soon-to-come residential units. In close proximity to Main Street shopping is the Mark train station. Residents and visitors are encouraged to use Laurel's public transportation systems, which creates a more walkable community. And since Laurel is a designated base realignment and closure zone, they're eligible for state funding of public infrastructure improvements that will positively impact both Laurel's present day and future economies. Although the face of Laurel is changing, it's changing for the better. Come be a part of this Maryland community that's smart, green, and growing. Welcome back to Curtain Call, and this time we have two actors from Joseph, and we're very pleased to have you. Why don't you tell me your name and what part you play in Joseph? I'm Kel McClanahan, and I play a myriad of different parts, but most notably I play Jacob, the paterfamilia, and then I play Potiphar, the sort of bad guy for Act One that, that owns Joseph. Okay, great. And I'm Sean Fournier. I play Gad, which is one of the brothers, as well as an Egyptian guard. Awesome. It's going to be a great show. I saw part of the rehearsal last night. I'll probably see more uh, tonight. Um, what's your favorite part about being in this show, Cal? Well, so this show for me is really remarkable because I am the character in the middle of several different songs, but I don't actually do that much singing or talking, people are always singing about me and sort of walking around me and talking about how awesome I am. And so it's very building for your ego. It makes you feel really good about yourself. You know, it, it is the, it's the show that I have been in. It's my first show since I had my daughter, who I, I took two years off mm -hmm. to go take care of her. And now I'm back in theater and I'm back here. We're great. We're so glad that you came back. Um, this is a wonderful show, and you seem to be having a good time. Uh, there's a lot of dancing in this show, uh, Sean. How is mm -hmm. that affecting you all? It's a lot of dancing. It's, a, it's been a lot of work, but uh, everyone is determined to get all the moves down, and everyone is st stays as energetic as possible, even after two or three hours of rehearsal every day. And <laughs> So I yeah. think it's been going very well. Yeah, the, the choreography is great. That's done by Kristen Rigsby. And um, she is very intense, and it seems like it's worked out because you guys look great. Now, Sean, you came in late in the picture because uh, somebody couldn't actually do the show, and you filled in for them. So tell me how that's been, just coming into a show a couple weeks before the end. <laughs> yep, it's, uh, yeah, I've been in now for, I think, three weeks, so about seven or eight rehearsals, and this is actually my first musical. So jumping into it full on, it's been a bit uh, of stressful for myself trying to learn everything so quickly, where as everyone else has had a little bit more time, but everyone's been very great in helping me learn the steps and pointing out, like helping me where I should stand and movements and the songs, just if I'm glad for such a wonderful cast to help me learn in such a quick time. Well, we appreciate you coming in and kind of saving the day. Um, 
And I should say that Sean's been around a while, uh, <laughs> like, what, maybe a couple uh, years? Almost, almost two years, yeah, yeah. he's been the jack of all trades. You've been stage <laughs> manager, filling in, doing small parts, big parts, box office, everything. And, and that's what a volunteer is at Laura Mill Playhouse. We do everything. So it's um, great to have you. Um, Kel, how, how are you, um, what do you like most about your character, your two characters, My I two guess? Characters. <laughs> Well, so without being the lead, uh, both Jacob and Potiphar are, are are sort of engines of moving the plot forward. Mm -hmm. They are th this sh this entire show is sort of the story of Joseph and things that happened to him, and I get to play not only one but two sort of signposts in that that, that you can. Just mark time by, oh, now he is in the Potiphar stage. Now he is in the Jacob stage. And it is meaningful because then you sort of end the scene and say, well, okay, now, now due to me being the one who happened to be on stage at the time, we're now moving into something else. And so it's weird, I know, but it's the way I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> So what was the last thing you were in? Man of La Mancha? Man of La Mancha okay. here at Laurel Mill. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was a great, great show. We enjoyed everybody um, in that. Sean, there's um, a lot of people on this stage, you know, and there's a lot of dancing going on. How is it maneuvering with all this, with people next to you <laughs> so close? And behind stage, too. <laughs> it takes a little bit of quick thinking. Um, you have to be always paying attention about where everyone is and making sure that you try to follow the same movements every rehearsal so you're not surprising someone and, be, and all of a sudden you're where they thought they were going to be and just working around whatever happens on stage. Right. So right. especially with the dances, there's a couple of dances where you want to get back to your spot, but as long as you get <laughs> back to where it makes sense, because if someone else is there, you clearly can't get there. You got to mm -hmm be able to be quick on your feet and go, okay, I'm going to go to this spot, but I'm yeah. going to keep looking like I'm dancing. And you have to dodge the free range soloists yes. yeah. that are exactly. going through. <laughs> yeah, as you're dancing. Um, do, you, do you want to come back and do a musical uh, again? I would love to come back. Uh, there's been, I'm, there's a couple musicals I've been thinking about, um, hopefully that we could do at Lower Mill Playhouse and Maybe in the future we'll be able to do those. That, that'll be great. How are the costume changes going? <laughs> Is that a little Boy. crazy behind the scenes? Uh, well, right now yeah. it's okay, but once we get the, uh, the band backstage that we're gonna have, we're gonna have to be, have our costumes preset in very certain spots because yeah, you have like very little to no time to switch between costumes, so you have to yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an art. <laughs> That's, right. That's La right. Last night was the first time that I have made it on stage fully dressed ah. uh, for every yay. single costume I'm in. Uh, so yay, I'm very proud of that. Uh, Hopefully I'll keep that up. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> I have four costume changes, oh. often with like two or three minutes to do it. And so it's really, yeah. You know. Do you have people to help you? That's going to be decided tonight. Oh, great. <laughs> it depends on how naked I am when great. I come out on stage great. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so you feel like you need help over that. <laughs> what would you like to do next at Laurel Mill Playhouse? Well, I mean, every, every person who does theater has sort uh -huh. of their bucket list. Uh -huh. And I personally would really like to see something that would be sort of a, a bigger production, like uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the mm -hmm. forum, or even something more like an anthology like Schoolhouse Rock Live is mm -hmm. one that I've always mm -hmm. wanted to do. And so I'm hoping that you know, somebody somewhere will put, put on one of those that I can drive to. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> great. Well, thank you all so much for coming out today and thank you for being in the show. I know it's gonna be spectacular. It starts April the 27th and runs through May the 20th. And I would suggest getting your tickets quickly because they are selling fast. Um, you can purchase your tickets online at uh, www.laurelmillplayhouse.org, and they range in price from $17 to $22. Uh, if you have any questions, you can give me a call 
at um, 301-452-2557, or you can call the uh, Playhouse at 301-617-9906, but be sure and press 2. You have to leave a message, but somebody will call you back. So we hope to see you all there. And thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>